They like scoring goals and they like skating by ya Try to put one past them, their goalies will deny ya Cause they're unstoppable, yeah Watch for the ladies in the blue Reppin' the Queen City, they're here to take their crown They'll score from every angle, then head for the next town Cause they're unstoppable, yeah Watch for the ladies in the blue Welcome everybody to today's episode of the Ranting Ron Show. My special guest today is from the Buffalo Buttes, Nathaniel Oliver, who is now the new general manager of the Buttes. How are you doing today, Nate? Great, Ron. Thank you very much for, for having me on the show. Pleasure to be here and looking forward to talking some hockey with you. That's good. I know we had to cancel on each other a few times, but I finally got you here. So it's been a little crazy whirlwind for you, I know, in the last recently. So now you're the new GM. Yeah, uh, everything happened very, very quickly. Um, I've officially been the Buttes GM since May 11th um, is when I've taken over the, took over the position. And, you know, from there, just been assembling the team. I'm, I'm sure you've seen uh, on social media the, the signings that have been announced thus far, uh, both for our Buttes coaching staff and uh, for, for our players. Um, and that's going to continue to be uh, – the main crux uh, of my role right now is we're in the off season and we're, and we're getting prepared to start the 2020-21 season, which will be the league's uh, sixth season for, for the NWHL. And what, what's the date looking like right now? For um, right now it's looking like uh, we're going to be uh, around November, uh, mid-November-ish um, is when regular season play would start. Um, we're going to be starting to practice in late September, um, you know, and a lot of that right there is, as we all know, is contingent on, on the pandemic right now and COVID, but at least that's the plan that, that we have moving forward. Um, I speak with the coaching staff pretty much daily um, right now and just discuss logistics and, and planning purposes um, while we're also scouting and, and signing players. Um, but well, normally, historically, when we look at the, the previous five seasons, um, they've started in October, at least in regular season play. So I think it's you know, it's a smart move that's going to be a, a bit later this season, um, just to make sure that we're keeping everybody safe, uh, players, staff, and, and certainly fans as well. All right. Well, that's good to hear. So you um, where you normally play at the Northtown Center out in uh, Amherst, right? That's where your home games are played? Yep, um, and we'll be there again for, for this upcoming season as well, too. Uh, the staff there has just been phenomenal in the way that they, they treat us with, you know, with our own locker room and um, just any sort of amenities, assistance that they can provide to us. They, they've been great and, and really have made us feel home there, like it is home. Uh, the nickname for, for our, our rink is, is Fort Butte, uh, and, you know, we, we kind of play that up a bit on, on social media and even talking amongst ourselves as a team, um, but it's it's nice to see how how supportive they've been to us as a rink and in welcoming us there that's all. now you have six home games and six away games right uh actually the the season's been been upped a bit uh so last season was the the lar the longest regular season that the NWHL has done before typically in in the first four seasons of the league it was around between 15 to 17 games it fluctuated between the first few seasons but um, no more than, than 17. Last season, um, we actually had 24 uh, regular season home games. So we had, or I'm sorry, regular season games. We had uh, 12 at home and uh, 12 on the road. Uh, this season, we're going to have 20 regular season games. So we'll have 10 home games and 10 road games as well, too. Um, the schedule is not uh, out yet. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll be um, at some point in, in the near future, maybe next month or so, just to, to hazard a guess. Um, but, you know, there's, there's six teams in the league, so five other teams besides us. Um, and if they, you know, break it up evenly, uh, it looks like we would have a road trip to each of the other cities. And then, you know, they would do the same with coming to Buffalo. I think I was mixing myself up six home games, but it's actually six home weekends, right? Like you play back-to-back -back at home on Saturday and Sunday? That would be yeah. It. yeah, so tip, typically it's been, it's been an entire weekend. Um, there was maybe... I think last season we started on the road with just one single game. Uh, we played Connecticut. It was our first game of the season. It was on the road. Um, so that one was kind of 
broken up in there. And um, I think there was another, obviously, just mathematically that, that would have been a single weekend. But um, yeah, so we have with the 10, the 10 home games and the 10 away games, they typically pair them together for Saturday and Sunday. So yeah, we would have we would actually have five weekends um, at home and, and five away if they break it down like that. Um, you know, so we'll see. We'll see if there's any single games here or there. Okay, so I was trying to think why I was thinking six after I said that, but now I know why. I was thinking about the number of weekends plus playoffs and everything else. So, for sure. Know. So you've been with the Buttes for how long? And how uh, in, a, in an official capacity, um, I'm heading into my my second season with the team. Um, last season, I was brought on board as the the team's community coordinator. Um, I had gotten a little bit of, of a start in the summertime, but officially it came on in an official capacity in September of, of last year. Um, so, you know, it's, it's been almost a full, full year now, um, um, and it's going to be the second season. So my role with that was just getting the players immersed in the Buffalo community. Uh, we try to do uh, at least one big event every month. Um, we did an event with you with BB&G Charities uh, for, for bowling as a fundraiser. That was we did other... had one back in January. We haven't had one since because right, I know, <laughs> you know, and obviously with the, the pandemic and everything, you know, so that and, and once the off season starts, a, a lot of players, they, you know, they go back home, and there's not too many that are that are around Buffalo because a lot of our team is from abroad. Um, but last season, uh, you know, we we made sure that at least once a month we were, were doing a big community event. So we were at Children's Hospital delivering stuffed animals. We were at the Great Pumpkin Farm out in Clarence, uh, Santa's Workshop at the Botanical Gardens. And it was really wonderful to see, you know, how, how our players, we had 22 players on the roster last season and only six of them were for the Buffalo area. So it was great to see how players from, from other countries and other parts of the United States really embraced the city and, and got involved. Not, none of the events were mandatory. Um, you know, they, they volunteered and, and did it of, of their own accord. So that, that was great to see. Um, and it really helped the team get connected with, with the community. So that was really my main role um, with that last season. Uh, in addition to that, I was kind of a de facto uh, assistant GM, if, if you will, um, and I helped out with a lot of other things beyond that. So uh, a couple of times I, I served as a proxy GM when we went on road trips. Um, you know, there were different things that I, that I, I helped the players with to get them adjusted to, to Buffalo and help them with, with anything that they need, just getting settled there, just different odds and ends. Um, and so that was really how I, I got involved with the team, at least for my, my first season working in capacity for them. Um, prior to that, I've, I've been a, a women's hockey writer for a number of years. Um, so I was credentialed uh, to cover the team, both for the hockey writers publication out of Montreal, and then also as the, the MD, NWHL's beat writer covering the Buttes uh, as well, too, for a few seasons prior to that. So I had been around the team for a while, um, but only last season is in an official capacity as an employee of the team. So you go from just, you know, being a writer, not just, take it for it, but you're a writer, you're doing having fun, and uh, you're writing, you're doing your publications, and I know you have a regular day job, and it's up to you if you want to say what that is, um, mm -hmm. and then you uh, start working for the Buttes in September, um, which is like eight months, nine months ago, and um, the previous GM, Mandy, leaves for Toronto, and mm -hmm. you, you want to be GM, and it, you must have been like, what? I mean, it had to be like, what? <laughs> Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, for a Buffalo boy, it's certainly a dream come true, um, but I can't say at all that it was expected. Um, you know, I, I, I was very much surprised. I think when it was initially broached to me, I, you know, my, my heart started racing a little bit and, you know, uh, definitely uh, feelings of excitement and nervousness. Um, but bottom line is that that I was happy um, and, I, and I, I'm very happy about it. And my experience has always been that if if something makes you happy in life and um you know you, sh you should follow that that feeling you should follow that instinct and, and go with it so uh it happened very fast it wasn't expected i think um the initial conversations of, about it were happening in early may um and then by the time may 11th rolled around that was when i officially started in the position uh, mandy's mandy cronin's uh last day with the the buttes was made uh 12 or i'm sorry may 10th 
um, and then I took over on, on the 11th. Um, and yes, Mandy's the, the new GM with uh, the Toronto Six, which is our new expansion team in the NWHL. And so that, that's great, especially they have that Buffalo-Toronto rivalry um, that we seem, you know, we definitely have with the Buffalo Sabres and the Toronto Maple Leafs. So it's nice to see that happening as well in, in, in the women's game, um, you know, to have that as well too. And I, and I know, uh, you know, the fact that Mandy was GM here, uh, they've also signed a player, Cheyenne D'Arcangelo, who was with, who played for the Buttes when we won the Isabel Cup in uh, 2017. Um, so she's up there too, and it, it's kind of neat, you know, and we have a number of players from the Ontario area. So I, I think there will be, the, the, set, the stage is set for a rivalry, we'll put it that way. Yeah, Buffalo and Toronto, we don't, uh, you know, they're Bills fans by day, but we hate each other by night. We know how that works. So, hey, every rivalry is good. So, <laughs> I was supposed to have you on May 10th. So, you're saying that this happened on May 10th, and that's why you canceled with me. All right. I forgive no. you. <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> I know, I know. You but, told me uh, something came up, and you couldn't say, well, you know, whatever. I understood that. I mean, you're a you're GMA hockey team. I'm just a guy sitting down here in my uh, man cave down here doing these shows for fun, and, I, you know, and... But uh, no, I, I want to congratulations on that. That is really awesome. You know, it's, you know, there's an RGM who just took, who from here too, just took over a different hockey team in this town. So I wish you both, both a lot of luck because, you know, we need some winning around here. So, Thank you, Ron. you know, Buffalo is a big hockey market, no doubt. Probably really up there in the U.S. Maybe the number one U.S. city in hockey for the size of the market we are. Is it a woman's hockey community? From what you can see and really know, how hard was it work at, to do you were marketing first so this this really helps your background now becoming a gm do you believe the do you believe in the city to really support this team and watch it grow as it goes i mean how do you or do you think maybe you can play if you had to guess me from what you talk to people out in the community is like the, hey the buffalo Buttes, you know yes no it's, it's a real commodity here it's really going to grow we can, we believe it can really happen here because buffalo is such a hot hockey market yeah, absolutely. Uh, I agree with everything that, that you said. Um, there's no question in my mind that, that, that Buffalo is a women's hockey town. Um, it's a hockey town in general. So, you know, regardless of, you know, whether it's little girls or little boys, um, you know, Buffalo breathes hockey, um, you know, and the Buttes, there we have, and, and I'm not going out on a limb here, um, mm -hmm we have the most passionate fans in the, in the NWHL, hands down. Um, you know, even going back to that first, that inaugural 2015-16 season, um, you know, and I've, I've had the, the opportunity to, to travel to the, the other teams w within the league and, and see their fan bases as well, too, in, in their home rinks. And, um, you know, I, I'm of the mindset that's, you know, hands down, we, we have the top fans and we have some really passionate ones that, that – follow us closely, that, that will take road trips to support the team. Um, they, they come out to our practices. I mean, how many, how many um, teams as it is for any sport uh, have fans that show up time and time again for every single practice just to cheer on the players and just to be supportive of them. So the Buffalo community has certainly embraced the team, and I, and I think it's only going to continue to get better and better. You know, we played our, our outdoor game last season at Buffalo Riverworks, uh, the Labatt Blue uh, NWHL Buffalo Beliefs Classic, and we sold out the event. Um, it, was, it was absolutely packed with, with fans there. It was a fun time for everybody. We played the, the Metropolitan Riveters, who, you know, up until this point have been our biggest rival. Um, and then I think it's also super important to, to mention that women, women's hockey is already pretty firmly established in the Buffalo area. You know, there's, there's the Girls Fed League, um, that it's, it's been fantastic to see players that have gone through that system uh, end up playing for the Buttes. So if you look at, and, I, and I'd have to double check on, I think the, the season that we won the cup in, in 2016-17, but pretty much every other season besides that, um, and no, on that one too. So each season that we've played, the, the five seasons prior, there has always been at least one native Western New Yorker on the team. Uh, that has made the team, um, you know, and I think last season, I, you know, I mentioned it earlier, we had 22 players on the roster. Um, six of them were from Western New York and 
uh, a number of that those six actually played girls fed um, in Western New York, where they played uh, for for their high school team. Um, you know, native Western New Yorkers who have grown up and now get to, have gotten to play for the hometown team, and that's happened for every season of the Butte. So I think that in of itself um, just speaks volumes. And then if if you look at the the college scene now, uh, the college ranks. Uh, players that are either playing NCAA Division One or uh, Division Three, um, there there are a lot of native Buffalonians that that are out there on NCAA teams that I'm sure at some point would love the opportunity to play for the Buttes. So, the the stage is set for that, um, and there's certainly the passion there. There's certainly the history there. It's just a matter of continuing to build on that, and and I know that the Buttes will do so. Um, a lot of that was what I was saying before in terms of embracing the community. You have to show that we're here, we're approachable, we're, we're tangible. Um, so, so many of the events that we did last season, and we do it after every single um, home game as well, too. All the NWHL teams, too, is we sign autographs for the fans. You know, you can meet your favorite Buttes player out in the lobby and get a signed autograph from her. You can, you know, take a, a photo with her. Um, we try to do things like meet and greets and, and things like that. So, it's just a, a matter of keeping the, the fire going and, and keep pushing that. And, and it's only going to get better and better as time goes along. Well, that's awesome. You know, and hopefully you, when the season comes closer and again, maybe you'll bring a couple of girls on here to talk some of their games. Um, now, I, I remember at the bowling event, um, you, you know, it was like, you said you might be able to get five or six and I think you had a dozen. It, it was a lot, eight, ten, whatever. It was a lot. And that was really great. So, um, and you was two ladies that came, I guess, were your main, um, fans like they run the fan so the booster club thing they were there so and it was awesome you know and it, it's it, you got to be in this community I mean when the Sabres first hit 1970 it was you new know, and people you know but hockey was big because we're on the border so you know and of course you have the Olympic hockey with U.S. Sabres Canada I think was the beginning of you know I want 88 maybe uh, 92 I, I Go back. Oh, with, with with the N with the NHL players, yeah. Um, I think the the first one with NHL was was the ninety eight uh, uh, Nag Nagano, yeah. Yes, and then USA, and then the way USA women and you you know and Canadian women, it was like, you know, you know, we're going to meet every single year, and you know, so and, yeah, I thought women's hockey, you know, it was burning. I do not like NHL players in the Olympics. So, all right, this show is sponsored by Dinosaur Barbecue. And we are going to take a commercial break right here and be back in about 20 seconds. All right, Nate, um, everybody, uh, Dinosaur Barbecue is open for dine-in for a percentage. I think it's 25% of the people can dine in. Uh, you will have to reserve ahead of time. They are, of course, open for takeout and drive through We'll be right back. Welcome, everybody, back to the Ranting Ron Show with Nate Oliver, the current GM of your Buffalo Buttes. So, the, you know, we got left with, uh, you know, the growth of uh, hockey in Buffalo. So now I've been watching on Twitter. You guys, every just like any team in sports, you lose a few, you get a few, and you recently signed some players. A um, couple of big names here. Well, who did you sign that uh, you're really excited about? I know you can say all of them, but, you know, let's go with who, who you're really excited about that you signed. Yeah, for sure. So the, the most, and yes, to your point, I'm excited about all of our players that, that we've signed. Um, I, I say to them, you know, while we're doing contract negotiations and, and speaking with the staff is that every component, every, every part of this team, whether you're the top goal scorer, whether you're, you know, the, 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 the third goalie, um, you know, the eighth D, no matter what it is, each person brings something uh, to this club that is valuable and that we've sought after. So the moves that we are making are extremely deliberate. Uh, uh, the coaching staff and I, like I said earlier, we, we talk daily and we look at a lot of video. We have communications and uh, with, with by email, via Zoom, um, just scouting players, um, ones that we've looked at closely. And then we just take it from there. You know, we I'll, I'll chat with the player, see what they're – their interest is in coming to Buffalo and, and, and it just kind of rolls from there. But we're my, my main point with the signings that we've done so far and will continue to do is that we have a plan in place that the coaches and I believe in and, and have bought into and developed. And it's, it's the way that we're going with this team. So every move that we're making is by, by 
choice and, and is very deliberate um, as we go through. And I think once all is said and done and the players that we've signed have all been signed, wanting to sign have all been signed, um, I think fans will be pretty happy with the product that we will have put together. Um, so the signing that we just made yesterday was Allison Matteau, um, and that's a, a great signing. Um, is you know, Stefan? It's Stefan Matteau's daughter. So, you know, uh, for that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that and her, her brother, <laughs> her brother, of course, plays, uh, he plays, he played for the New Jersey Devil. He's, he's currently playing in the Columbus Blue Jackets organization. So it's been kind of neat to, to see a family affair of sorts. And, you know, for me, I was 14 years old when, when Stefan Matteau scored that, the goal against the Devils to eliminate them and move out the Rangers onto the finals. And, I think everybody who's a hockey fan certainly remembers that goal. So, yeah, it's in some ways for me, it's I guess it's kind of neat in a way that a player that I grew up watching now now I've signed his his daughter. But uh, Allison stands alone on, on her own credentials as to how amazing a player she is. I, I the first time that I, I saw her um, was at the 2015 Women's U18 tournament, which was actually played here in Buffalo um, downtown. And uh, she was a defender for Team Canada and, you know, it immediately impressed me. Uh, she just has a lot of tenacity. She's a very physical player. Um, she's got great size, um, but she has pretty much every asset that you would want to see in, in a defender. She, she has some offensive capabilities and, and she, she certainly contributes from that, but that regard. She has excellent hockey IQ. She's able to read plays very well, generate plays well of her own accord, um, moving the puck up ice. Um, she, she just is a natural leader. She was in her senior season for uh, University of Maine. She was the, the club's team captain. Um, and then, like I said, she's just, she's a very tough physical player um, on, on the back end, uh, which is great for us, you know, to have that back there. Defense is something that we really want to improve this season. Um, and we've signed a number of defenders that, that have been announced so, so far. Um, and each one of them is fantastic in my mind. Um, and I, I have no bones about saying that is, uh, there, we, ha we have a tremendous blue line right now if, if you just look at the names that we've signed. All right, that's awesome. And, um, well, I'm going to get my new favorite player, and I think you just talked about her. So, you know, what jersey number does she wear? Or has he decided yet? Uh, she, it looks like she's going to be wearing number 23. So, <laughs> okay. Sam Reinhardt, that's fine. You know, type guy, uh, girl. Well, I like Sam Reinhardt. And, and, and her, her, um, her dad, Stefan, wore 32. So it's kind of the reverse uh -oh. of dad. Okay. Okay. That, that, I think it's really cool that that's like when you do, I really was going to, I thought you were going to say, no, just coincidence, you know, Canadians, you know, and I'll, oh, okay. So, yeah. you know, so you like, you made some additions, you made some subtractions. Do you really like, you, are you done? Is the team set now? Or, and do you really like what this current season coming up, it looks like we, do you think, you know, I'm, I know you're going to be biased, but do you really feel strong? Like we have a real shot at these World Cup? Yeah, ab absolutely. We, we do. Um, and I think, you know, just to, to kind of piggyback off of that and um, give you a little background for it. So uh, the league, we, we, each team in the league has to sign at least 20 players um, and no more than 25. Um, so we, you know, we've only had a handful of signings announced so far. Um, so there, there's more certainly coming. Um, you know, we, we got a ways to go. And that's really in the process of what we're doing right now um, between the coaches and myself is, trying to see what players we do want to sign and pursue, um, bring them aboard, see where they fit, and, and, and start to put this team together. But, you know, I, I mentioned Allison Matteau, but if, if you look at the rest of our blue line, you know, we have MJ Pelletier, who's returning from last season. She mm -hmm. set a number of records, both for the Buttes and in the NWHL. She was an all-star. She was a captain at UNH. Um, you know, so, so, so she's coming back. Uh, we have Lisa Chesson, who was with us with – when we won the Isabel Cup 2016-17, um, played a few other seasons besides that, and she was an Olympia. She's an Olympic silver medalist for Team USA uh, for the 2010 Games. And then we've added um, newcomers to, to the NWHL. Dominique Kramer uh, was a great player for Mary Mack College, played in Sweden last season, and has just come back stateside to, to join the Buttes. Whitney Dove uh, playing with, with Providence, um, uh, a fantastic player who is just a heck of a shot. 
uh, Lenka Tremova, who uh, played, uh, she's a member of Slovakia's women's national team and, and played in the NWHL All-Star game last season. She actually scored our first goal last season as well, too, when the regular season started. So uh, we, we've built that strong defense already. Then, you know, you take it from there, we got Carly Jackson and Nate Nett. She was our, our top draft pick for the season. Phenomenal goalie, pretty much has all of the goaltending records for the University of Maine. Um, and now we've got her straight out of college coming to Buffalo. Uh, and, you know, we've signed, re-signed Taylor Kersey, our top goal scorer last season. Uh, Cassie McPherson, our, you know, our, our best two-way player um, from the club last year. Autumn McDougal, another draft pick. I mean, uh, those and those are all the ones that that have been announced so far. So we've got a really str- we're, we're strongly developing this team, in, assembling it together. And as I started off, uh, we're we're being very deliberate with how this is coming together, and and we have a plan in place that we're sticking to. All right, when I hear words deliberate doing this. It reminds me of over McBean over there. Those two guys in at One Bill Drive. So. <laughs> I like to hear that stuff, you know, it's good. Now contracts, just real quick before we move on here, are contracts, are they only one-year contracts or can you do, how does that work? They're, they're one-year contracts. Okay. Historically for the league, they've, they've been one-year contracts. So, um, you know, uh, we've had players that, that, that return, but each year you, you negotiate uh, new contracts with the player. Um, you know, so it's great to see, I, I mentioned Taylor Kersey, who was our, our top scorer and is just a heck of a hockey player, a heck of a person as well too. Um, you know, she, her first season was 2017, 18 with us. Uh, so she's got a few seasons under her belt and she's going to be back again. And, and she's definitely a sniper. Um, one of the best in the league, um, if not the best. Um, so, uh, it, you know, once players get a flavor for Buffalo and see what this team is about, what the city's about and the kind of support that we have from our fans, um, it, it really, lends credence to the idea of, of wanting to return and play multiple seasons here. All right. It sounds it's just interesting that, you know, like, so you draft somebody out of Maine, but you only have them for a year, unless you have some restricted free agency rights. I mean, we'll, you know, I'll bring, bring you on again. We'll get deeper into that sometime to see how a lot of that sure. stuff works. Because, like, obviously, you know, it's like you work hard to build this team and you almost got to restart it, like, every single year. But, again, it's a lot of players like to come back. So that's for awesome. sure. So – you know, so I'm sitting at home on a Saturday afternoon or something, and I want, I want to watch a game on the internet or some kind of TV. Flat. Where would fans find a game to watch, if they, have, if they are at all, um, a video version? Or do they just have to go down to games and the only way to see them is that way? No, you can you can definitely tune in online, and we have a, a huge following. So all of our games are broadcast on, on the platform Twitch. Are you, are you familiar with Twitch? I heard of it. Yeah, so it, it's a great platform. Um, it's been often awesome for us because not only can you tune into every NWHL game, um, there's a chat function where uh, you know it's our our broadcasters for each of the game. They they monitor the chats and they're able to interact with fans. And then we've done some additional programming on there too. And there's going to be more to come. So there'll be some neat unique shows on there um, that are actually NWHL shows or NWHL programs um, where. Uh, we've done we've done a few things in terms of player interviews, um, but we're going to try to expand upon that this season as well too. But every game can be caught on Twitch, so the easiest way to do it, at least the way I, I do it, is you can pull it up from your phone. If you go to the league's website uh, on game days, it will it will have the link uh, for the games and, and connect you right to Twitch. What I typically do, you know, if, if I'm at home and want to catch a game, is I pull it up the game on my laptop, get an HDMI cord and connect it to my TV and just watch it like you would any other game. Um, so oh. Twitch has been a phenomenal platform for us. And, and, and it's a free? great way to try out games. It's free. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. To- totally free. Um, you know, and, and even prior to that, all our games were on, on YouTube. Um, or I'm sorry, on, on, um, on Twitter. And then uh, some of them have since been uploaded to, to YouTube, but uh, right. Twitter was... Uh, a main uh, plug for us for a while for platforms for games, but Twitch has been phenomenal. We we love it. Good. And someday maybe you got to get those big TV contracts, and then you could I could tell you remember you when. <laughs> <laughs> so be, there's yeah. Yeah, there's six teams in the league. Pardon me. There are six teams currently in the league. Six. Yes, there, there's there's six teams. So originally it was four. Um, it was the Buffalo Buttes, the Connecticut Whale. Um, 
the Metropolitan Riveters, they, they were the New York Riveters, but now they're the Metropolitan Riveters, so a slight name change, and the Boston Pride. Okay. Um, and then uh, two seasons ago, we added the Minnesota Whitecaps, yep. um, who had been around for a while as an independent women's league, or I'm sorry, independent women's team. Um, you know, they've been around for probably about 12, 13 years now, uh, but they, they joined the, the NWHL. It's great to have them on board and be able to go out to Minnesota for games and have them come here. And then uh, this season, this is our sixth season in the league, and we've added our, our sixth team, um, the, the Toronto Six. Uh, so um, going to be going up to Canada, which is great to have a team north of the border. Uh, a lot of our players uh, are from Canada. Um, especially for the Buttes, you know, this last, this past season, about half of the team was Canadian. Um, and the good number of them lived in Southern Ontario during the course of the season. Uh, and again, if you look at the players that we've signed so far, um, we have a lot of returning Canadians as well too. And I, I think we'll have probably a, a similar um, amount of players from, from, as from Canada that we did last season as well. It's interesting that, the, you know, the five U.S.-based teams, now you have a Canadian team. I would, I would think that Canadian, uh, women's hockey in Canada would be pretty big that they should have maybe a team, for example, Hamilton or Ottawa or whatever. I don't know. It, I would expect to be more teams up in Canada maybe then so here, but maybe that's coming. Is there expansion talk? What is it, what's it looking like? Yeah, I, I haven't heard anything in particular, but the, the, the rumors or the rumor mill, if you want to say, or maybe just – um, just thoughts on on where would be good markets to expand to has kind of been there since day one. So you know, you mentioned uh, adding another team in Canada. I think I think there's a lot of people that would like to see a team in Montreal, um, and that's certainly doable with um, the bulk of our teams being on, on the East Coast. But you know, I, I've also heard talks of Detroit, which I think would be a great city as well too. Um, the, probably the longest standing notion for adding a, another NWHL team has been Pittsburgh. Um, we actually did have the league's all-star game there um, one of the, one year or one of the seasons. Um, and I think that would be another great place to play. Obviously another hockey town, just like the, you know, the other two I named, I've heard Washington DC, um, you know, and, and there's even been some plugs for Philadelphia. So I, I certainly think that when it's an established hockey town, um, which we know all of those places are, it certainly yep. lends credence to the idea that you could add another team there that would that would be successful. So I think, you know, I think all of us, we want to see the the women's game continue to grow. I remember, you know, that's why we do this. That's why we care so much about this particular sport and, and, and want to push for it. So I think it would be great to see more teams added to the league and, and any of those markets. More more teams are, are end up being more jobs for, for players um, and more opportunity there. And it, it kind of spreads out the talent a bit more. Um, so that would be great to see. I mean, right now, you know, and, and people have drawn c comparisons to this, so it's nothing new that I'm, I'm mentioning. But, of course, the comparison is, is that to the, the NHL's original six, right, um, you know, having the, the six teams that we do. And I think it will continue to grow from there. I, I personally, uh, just, you know, giving my thoughts on it, I, I've always loved the idea of eight teams um, and – have one conference of uh, four and another conference of four. And then, you know, the way you could construct playoffs is four teams make it and four are on the outside, or maybe have six teams make it and two are out on the outside. But I think eight would give you a, a really nice number. So, you know, fingers crossed that, that it happens soon. Uh, uh, but I, I, I definitely think that the NWHL is, is far from being over with expanding. I, I think you, you will see more teams in the years ahead. Uh, that would be pretty awesome. And then um, I had a thought there. It kind of went away for a second. There. I was going to ask, um, oh, uh, probably one of the big questions a fan would ask you is, how's the attendance? Like, what would be the average home game? And that's just Buffalo. Buffalo, I don't know if they're the best draw or not. I don't know. But what's the average attendance for a game and maybe a full season? Sure. So, um, you know, we had we do have a lot of season ticket holders. We do have a lot of fans that, that show up um, just on game days and come or buy individual tickets um, where we play at the Northtown Center right now. Um, I want to be accurate with this, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure are the feature rink that we play on. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's, it's 1800. Um, so, you know, we had we had the, in fact, there's an exhibition game we played last season um, against Brock University. You know, it was just a, it was 
preseason game and it was absolutely packed in there with, with fans and, and just attendees. Um, and it's a great, you know, it's a great, what I always say to people is once you come to one Buttes game, uh, you're going to get hooked. I've never seen somebody that, that comes to a game and, you know, has any regrets about it or, you know, thinks that maybe it's not for them. The, the opposite always happens. They, they get hooked on it because it's, it's an inexpensive ticket for, you know, for starters. So that kind of opens the door to people. But once they get there, and the most important part is they see the, the level of play that these players play at um, and compete at, um, you know, it, it lifts you out of your seat. Um, and so I, I think the attendance wise, we'll just, you know, we'll continue to grow. So there's certainly the diehard fans that come to every single game. Um, but then, you know, in addition to that, we're, all, we're always adding more. And, and it's a great family experience as well, too. I, I mentioned earlier that uh, after the games, players are out there and, and they sign autographs for, well, we have an autograph table and you just make your way down. You can meet any of the players, uh, pick your, your favorite and, you know, maybe take a photo with her or whatnot. Um, that's been fantastic too. And, and it's great for the young athletes, boys and girls that, that love the game to have players like this to look up to that, that are tangible. I know, you know, you and I both grew up in Buffalo and, you know, I think of going to the odd with my, my dad in the eighties in and nineties. And I never felt, you know, that, uh, meeting a hockey player, reaching out to a hockey player was a very tangible experience. It, it was a dream come true. If, if you happen to meet one of them. Um, and I think the difference is with the NWHL and with, with the Buttes is that you can meet your favorite player. You can, you know, you can buy her, her jersey. You could buy her T-shirt um, and get it autographed. And um, the players are just, you know, kudos to them, um, especially the team that, that, that we have and the players are returning players. And I, and I know our new players are going to be just as great about it, but Kudos to them for how well they interact with the fans and embrace them. I, I always say to the players, and, and I say it to, to everybody because I think it applies to all walks of life, is, um, you know, people might forget what you said to them. People might forget what you showed them. But nobody ever forgets how you made them feel. And oh, our players that. do such a great job making the fans feel valued and that they're a part of this. Um, and they most certainly are. Um, and I think that's why I say that uh, Buffalo has the best fans in the league um, because I, I see how much they love the team and, and it's certainly reciprocated. Yeah. I know when I was growing up, you know, again, I, I'm older than you um, in the 80s. I mean, I go, you used to be able to go between the locker rooms as a thing. And after the games, the players would come out and you'd be able to get their autographs. So they're not too good about that too, but that's just the players walking by and you have to get there, but there'd be a lot of people. So it would be, now I wouldn't even know where to go unless I go to like a, um, like a you know, certain areas are set up and, you know, that's great. I think that the, you, know, you want to have the players out there and that's how players, you know, in their interactions with fans and fans are, you know, and it's right. It's things they will remember, you know, like the first time you talk to someone and then, you know, so, all right. And you're saying that uh, as attendance grows, that means eventually you're going to need a place that's going to hold more than 1800 eventually. I don't know if Northtown plans are growing or whatever, but, you know, hopefully that continues to go and you guys are going to be super successful this year, I believe. And hopefully you start on time. Now you're saying you're starting a month later, but still, Start on time to the plan you guys are hoping for. And um, I really wish you a lot of luck this season, you know. And uh, you'll see me around the rink. You know, I'll come down there, especially on Saturdays. I'll bring my daughters down there and uh, my sons. And we'll, uh, you know, show them, hey, man, once that mask is on, it doesn't matter who's under there. They're hitting, they're hitting. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and they're really going to have a great time. Um, I, I would encourage, I, you know, I, of course, you know, you could say I'm biased, but I would encourage anybody to come out to a Buttes game because, because it's fun. It's, it's the atmosphere. It's the, it's the players. Um, it's exciting hockey. It's, it's highly talented hockey. Um, you know, players that just give it their darndest and, and you can really get behind that. And then, you know, just to have an opportunity to, to meet the players after the game and, and interact with them. I, I think that that goes a long ways too. I, I don't know how many other leagues um, of any sports, uh, you know, afford that, at least not on a regular basis like the, the NWHL does. So, you know, it, it's great for those young players. And one thing I want to add real quickly is that, you know, we also have uh, youth teams that come out to, to every single game as well too. Um, and we have an honorary captain from, from each team that comes out onto the ice with the players as, as part of the, 
the introductions and we have intermission uh, during intermission uh, the youth teams play out there and, and they get to ride a, they get to sit on the bench during warm-ups and it's just great for, for that regard too so it's it's a fun time it's not very expensive when when you want to do a family outing and I'm sure people would never regret coming so it uh, I thank you very much for your kind words Ron and you know I I, I hope more and more people come out to Buffalo. If, if we outgrow the, the Northtown Center, it's a great problem to have. That's absolutely right, you know, and then the seasons get a little bit longer, a few more teams. I mean, it took the original six, 40 years, you know, and I, I mean, I won't be around in 40 years, but, you know, hey, I, you know, it's, it's great. So, again, hey, thanks for stopping by. No, appreciate it, Ron. You take All care right. now, okay? All right, everybody, this has been a Ranting Ron Show with General Manager Nate Oliver of the Buffalo Buttes. Everyone, have a great day. Mm -hmm.